When your boat is stationary for any length of time, either at a marina or at anchor, and you're going to be living aboard the boat and using various systems, there are several key things you need to keep an eye on. This associated handy checklist can be found in my guide, Checklist for Sailors, Passage Planning, Sailboat Maintenance, Cleaning, Medical and More. Every morning, or at least every few days, survey the bilge for water, oil, or fuel leaks. It's good to get in the habit of lifting a central floorboard often, just to make sure that the bilge is dry. I especially lift the floorboards after a heavy rainstorm and when turning on the engine or generator if it hasn't run for a while. Leaks can come from a variety of areas. We've had a fresh water shower hose form a slow trickle through to a busted hot water hose causing the floodgates to open. We've also had leaks coming from holes in the deck, loose hatch seals, and improperly sealed windows. Test that your bilge pump is working to ensure it's working and ensure it's on automatic. Bilge pumps are mission critical. Some boats have engines, batteries, and other valuable systems below the waterline. A saltwater leak could become disastrous very quickly if the bilge pump isn't triggered. Check your sea strainers. If you're running your generator, air conditioning or heating, refrigeration, or anything that requires a raw or saltwater cooling system to run, you'll want to keep an eye on your strainers. Interestingly, we never had to clean our strainers in the Caribbean or Mediterranean, but along the east coast of America, we have to clean them weekly. Check the water flow on all of your raw water cooling systems. Make sure that you can see the aircon, heating, refrigeration, genset cooling water easily flow out of the boat. Check your fresh water level. Our fresh water system is pressurized by an accumulator tank. If and when we get too low, it throws our whole system out of whack and it can take hours to get it working correctly again. For us, it's imperative that we never let our water tanks empty. Another reason to keep an eye on water levels comes down to a decision to ration. If you want to stay at an anchorage for a few more days yet you're running out of water, it's important to reduce water consumption. Or, if you have a water maker, it might be time to make some water. Check your battery charge levels every day. Depending on your batteries and the systems you have to keep them charged over time, you'll get to grips with how long you can last without having to take action. Some boats have solar and wind power that constantly tops up the batteries. Other boats, like ours, depend on having our generator running periodically to charge them up. We keep a very close eye on our battery charge level, and when the level gets too low, we charge them. The effectiveness of a fridge freezer can often depend on the temperature of the sea that you're in. In the Med, you might need one setting, and then once you get to the Caribbean, you'll have to change it. Furthermore, many boat refrigeration systems get a buildup over time, making the unit less and less effective, causing the need to slowly reduce the temperature gauge. At least once a week I'm changing our temperature gauge with the goal of keeping the fridge temperature below 5 degrees and the freezer below freezing. Generator checks. If you're running the generator often, you want to check its vitals every week. So you'll need to check the oil, water level, the belt, and have an overall look around for leaks, loose connections, and any dirt. Keeping the genset clean will allow you to see leaks or problems easily. Run your water maker weekly even if you don't need water. Depending on the system you have, most water makers need to run at least every 7 to 12 days to keep the system in good shape. While at anchor, it's easy to keep the water maker active, but when entering a marina for a longish stay, it can be forgotten. If at a marina for longer than the 7 to 12 days, a temporary pickling can be put in place to preserve the effectiveness of the water maker. Dive on your anchor if possible and or consider re-anchoring and if at a marina, check your warps. 
If you're in clear waters and it's easy to dive on your anchor, go down and check it out. Make sure that it's firmly set, in addition to looking at the chain along the sea floor. Over time, chain can rub on rocks and get damaged, or worse, it can hit reef and destroy it. Especially in strong tidal areas, anchors can get dislodged, chains can get tangled in rocks and reef, and the ultimate effectiveness of your ground tackle can be compromised. Just because your anchor may have been set for days doesn't mean that it will always stay set. And when you're at a marina, check your warps every time the tide changes, the wind starts to blow, or before a storm. Conditions change often, and although the boat may seem to be docked fine, a change of tide might cause it to become dangerously close to the jetty. Look at all the fenders as well. Fenders can pop up unexpectedly. So there you have it, the 10 critical daily and or weekly boat maintenance checks when on anchor or at a marina. If you have any uh, daily or weekly ones that we have missed, please put them in the comments below. Yeah, because by leaving your comments, other people can see them and we can all benefit. And we'll get helps us. Yes. <laughs> and as always, a big huge thank you to all our Patreon patrons, our Sailing Britikum guide buyers and our t-shirt buyers. Thanks to you guys, you're allowing us to continue making these videos for free. If you want to see any more educational sailing videos, or just follow our journey around the world, please subscribe <laughs> below. <laughs> okay, or just please subscribe now. <laughs> or please subscribe now. <laughs> Alright, that's cute, Simon. Simon Samsel picture. Okay, so I'm gonna do the first the first one, yeah? <laughs> Let me do that again. <laughs> so there you have it. It's Alright, bye. Bye. <laughs> If you're interested in buying a boat and haven't yet requested my free 37-page guide, How to Buy a Boat Without Getting Screwed, click here to download it now. When buying a boat, it truly is buyer beware. More often than not, I receive emails from extremely disappointed and disgruntled boat owners. In many cases, the boat buyer got ripped off, and in other cases, the buyer simply bought the wrong boat for what they wanted to achieve. Get this free guide, and you'll have access to 10 steps to getting the right boat for the right price.